What's up guys, it is Brandon from the Two Piece Mandem and this is back ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Premier League prediction week 15 ladies and gentlemen, week 15. And December is that type of month where games are just going to be rolling in. Some of the games are just going to be rolling in ladies and gentlemen. Too many freaking games are going to be rolling in and it's just mad, it's just mental. So much has happened since the last time I've actually done a freaking Premier League prediction. Actually I was actually meant to do one. I filmed one, but I didn't have enough space on my phone to actually, uh, um, was it, convert the video. So yeah, that was a bit ass. Obviously my FIFA series, yeah, um, I've stopped doing that because apparently the PS4 wants to take, was it, two days to upload a video. Um, so that's pretty much annoying. And yeah, I just don't have the time. I literally don't have the time to play FIFA as much as I did because I've just got so much going on now. So it's just ridiculous. I don't actually have enough time to play FIFA. Like before, I was used to, to play games and games of FIFA, and now I'm just I play like what one game or something like that, and it's not even that long because some people just rage quit. But either way, enough of that. Right, we're gonna get into the freaking matches. All right, so first match we're gonna get into. All right, this is on Tuesday. All right, third of uh, December at 7:30. I think it's one of the first games. It is Crystal Palace. Versus Bournemouth now, let's be honest, right? Both teams are bullshit. Well, Crystal Palace aren't actually bollocks. It, 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 I just rate Zaha and that's pretty much it. I don't really rate anyone else, if I'm honest with you. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Wilfred Zaha. Um, Crystal Palace, what is it? I think they, they beat Burnley 2-0 away. Uh, most, of, most of the time, they they win at Selhurst Park, I think. God honestly knows. And then for, what's the other team's name? Bournemouth. Yeah, they lost 3 2 against Tottenham. Let's be honest, they weren't going to be freaking Tottenham. Um, yeah, Tottenham just have too much quality for Bournemouth and Crystal Palace, let's just be honest. So, between them, I think it's just obvious he's going to win if I'm honest with you. So, the final score for me will be Crystal Palace 2, Bournemouth 1. Simple as that. Now, second game at, at 8 15. Also on a Tuesday, 3rd of December. Burnley versus Manchester City. Now, with this. Like, I feel as though Burnley just play like ass. Like, at home, they lose so many games that it's just ridiculous. Well, there are some games that they should be winning. I saw them before they played Crystal Palace. They got their first away win against Watford. Well, Watford are terrible. But still, it, it's just insane. And then for Man City. Very, very unlucky for Pep Guardiola to be coming into that game, right? 1-1, one, one, right? Then an absolute screamer from Kevin De Bruyne, right? An absolute screamer from Kevin De Bruyne, right? That was a Gerard slash Frank Lampard goal. I don't even care, man. You freaking smack that shit. I don't even care, y'all. You bang that shit, bro. Literally, hits the crossbar, it goes into hits the top of it. It's just mad. That was just, that was the best. That was, that's Frank goal of the month for me. Kevin De Bruyne's strike was literally goal of the month for me. I don't care what anyone says. That is freaking goal of the block of the month, alright? That was just a banging goal, alright? And then, out of all people, right? John Joe Shelby. Disco ball Shelby. Scores against you. A guy that hasn't played for Newcastle in freaking ages. Like, that's insane. It's from a set piece as well. The way for... The way Man City considered that, I think that was just stupid, like... If I'm honest with you. See, with Man City, right? When we play Manchester City, right? If anything, they got lucky. Let me tell you why. Well, we got lucky as well. But let me tell you why. Because their first goal against us was bollocks, right? And their second goal was actually world class. I'll give them that. Realistically, it should have ended 1-1. But it just it just didn't. Because Man City's quality shone through. And Chelsea actually did get lucky. But with Manchester City, their defence is just not to par, man. Like, Laporte being injured has made a massive dent in like getting back in the tower race right now because even Leicester City are above Manchester City right now even Leicester City look as though they're trying to catch Liverpool and trying to get that tower where Liverpool are just freaking miles ahead let's just be honest but we'll get onto that in a minute so for this one Man City are going to face Burnley at Turf Moor so final score for me since Burnley have been playing like ass and Man City have been playing alright I'm going to say Burnley 1 Manchester City 4 I'm going to say 2 goals from Sterling a goal from Kevin De Bruyne and a goal from Gabriel Jesus. Uh, yeah, just as simple as that. Now, for Wednesday, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six games 
for Wednesday. All right, six Premier League games. All right, so the first game, well, one of the one of the games at what 7:30 on the 4th of December is actually Chelsea versus Aston Villa. Now we versed West Ham, right, and we were absolute bollocks, right? No, first I think it feels our first 10 or 20 minutes of the game. We started to get into our stride. We looked comfortable. We we're creating chances. But I don't really feel as though he should have started Giroud. I think Amici Bashwai offers more, if I'm honest with you. Uh, with Giroud, yes, he has good hold up play and link up play, but he's just too slow. And we have a lot of fast players in the team. I don't think he should have started Pedro, because Pedro hasn't played a lot of games under Chelsea, so obviously when he starts, he's going to be extremely rusty. Um, yeah, Jorginho's passes weren't really um, cutting it that much. Pulisic, he had so many chances to score. But we just weren't able to score. It was like it was just ridiculous. Daniel James played all right. Um, I think the goal that we conceded was really, really sloppy. Uh, the way Cresswell just cut in on his right foot. Bear in mind, bear in mind he's a left back, right? Cresswell scored with his right foot, and I was just like, what? Fair enough, it was a good finish. Don't get me wrong, but still, to concede like that, dominating all that possession, it's actually a piss take, man. To concede like that, it's just bloody ridiculous, man. And they could have scored a second goal, but luckily VAR ruled it out because it was a clear handball for um, what's his name, Antonio. Either way, I was just annoyed how we freaking um, lost that man but at home as well. See, I'm more excited when we freaking win away rather than home. Like our home form needs some work because we shouldn't be losing against these teams at home. So that is a concern. And um, since Tammy's out. That's it, it just it didn't feel right when Tammy wasn't at Centre Forward. I'll be honest with you. The fact that he's injured, I hope hopefully he comes back soon. Hopefully we return soon because I freaking miss him and yeah. I just wanna I just wanna know like an update on his recovery and everything like that. Because Tammy Abraham is a huge loss for us. He links up he does more than just score goals, he links up the play really well. He gives us like a third option man, he's just such a hard striker. He's a target man. Oh man, anyway. Aston Villa uh I actually played very, very well at Old Trafford. I honestly thought Aston Villa were actually going to lose that, but the fact that they came back and drew it 2-2, uh, Tyrone Mings' goal was actually onside rather than, um, what was it, offside. So, fair play to that. Fair play to VAR for actually getting it right. And, yeah, Aston Villa actually, actually got, the, got a point from that, which I, if I was them, I'd freaking be gassed about. But I feel as though we'll be able to take them, so we should anyway. So, for me... My prediction for the game at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Villa will be Chelsea 3, Aston Villa 1. I think we'll cream them. I think it'll be a goal from, what is it, Michi Bashwai if he starts him. I also wanted Hudson-Odoi to start. I think he should start Hudson-Odoi. Um, Mason Mount didn't look that comfortable, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I think there'll be a goal from Pulisic. He didn't play his best. He, didn't, he has loads of chances, but I don't think he... He got involved in the game as much. He wasn't really clinical in like the final third. And the last one for me, I think it'll be, uh, what's his name? Ahead of from Zuma. Ahead of from Zuma. Uh, yeah, but defensively, we need to fix up if we're going to burst the Villa. Because they've got players like Wesley, Jack Grealish, Hurahan, and John McGinn. You love to shoot outside the box. And they are threats. All right. Next game. Leicester City versus Watford. Now, Leicester City actually got lucky against Everton scoring. Um, a goal right at the end. I think it was his name was Ian Nacho. There's another game at 7:30 as well on Wednesday. And if I'm honest with you, this is City have been doing bits, you know. They've actually been doing bits. Like if I'm honest with you, right? They've just been caning the whole thing. Leicester City have literally been caning the whole thing, and it's just completely insane how they've just been caning it. Like if I'm if I'm being completely honest with you, right? Leicester City have just been doing absolute bits. Like well, I think that's their sixth game in a row, right? And Brendan Rodgers so far as Leicester City manager, he's killing it. He's killing it. Vardy didn't. I don't know if Vardy got his goal or not, but v Jamie Vardy, I think he's he's currently the top goal scorer, and he's he's just been murdering it. Out. It's fair play to Leicester. They're now second in the league. Was it Watford on the other hand, losing against 19th place Southampton? Yeah, their manager got sacked. So yeah, I think that they are playing the third. Uh, was it they've sacked their second manager this season which is actually mad sacking two managers in one season that's just uh, with only I think what he's been in charge of what how many games fuck, fuck honestly knows like, it's just mad how, but 
Do you know what I mean? Like, you gotta do what you gotta do. If your managers aren't doing it, then sack that clock. We should know. We've been doing that for ages. So, the final score for this game will probably be... If I'm honest with you, this, what Fed have been playing like ass, let's just see her on form. It's an easy win for Leicester City, let's just be honest. So, final score for this one will be Leicester City 3, Watford 0. Alright. Southampton versus Norwich. Now, as we just talked before, Southampton have been playing like absolute ass. 19th in the league. We've got Norwich as well. Who actually got a very, very good point against Arsenal? I'll get onto that as well. Um, I think with Southampton, they just need to fix up. They need to set their manager because they're still 19. Um, good win against, good win um, at home against Watford. But let's be honest, against big teams, they'll probably get smacked. So let's just be honest. Even even average teams, they just get smacked. So yeah, um, I think it's gonna be a very, very tight game. So for this one, I'm gonna say Southampton one, Norwich one. Alright. Next game. Wolves versus West Ham. Now unlucky unlucky for Wolves because they actually drew against what's his name? They actually drew against what team was it? Sheffield United at the Monolith Stadium. Uh, that's why I've that's why I actually heard. I think Wolves have a good enough players uh, to beat West Ham. West Ham do carry a threat. Um, they carried a threat against Chelsea with Felipe and Anderson Antonio. Um, yeah, a lot of very Yarmolenko as well. A lot of creative, effective players. So that's what Wolves have to be aware of when West Ham do come to the Monolux Stadium. Uh, I think Wolves have to use their strength. They have to use Ra Jimenez, Jamatinho, uh, Jota, and the pace and strength of Adama Traore. Um, yeah, I think that's what's going to sell them through this game. I think it's going to be full of goals. So for this one, I'm going to say West Ham. I'm going to say Wolves for West Ham three. Now the next game, Manchester United versus Tottenham. All right, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer versus Jose Mourinho at 7:30. Another cracker of a game at Old Trafford. Mourinho comes back to Old Trafford as the new Tottenham manager. That's going to be a game. That's honestly going to be a game. It's going to be mixed emotions, a mixed atmosphere towards him. It's just going to be insane. I, I know Mourinho would love to get a result over the um, over United. Like it's just, it's just mad. It's literally just insane. And for Mourinho to be Tottenham manager, I'm honestly still disgusted about it. I'm not not really happy. It's, it, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you can stay with fucking um, shy hard line if I'm not Um Manchester United, unfortunately, drawing against Aston Villa, which I don't really care about. Do you know what I mean? It, it is what it is. They should have won that game, and yet again, they didn't. Poor form. Haven't been able to win at least, what, maybe, what, three games on the truck this season consistently, maybe? That's just Manchester United for you. So, yeah, they need to fix up. All right, and I knew that from the get-go, because I said that they were only scoring goals against us on the counter-attack. But people didn't believe me. They thought, okay, Manchester United are a new team. Oh, they've got so they they've got so many good players. They're freaking on the they're gonna get teams on the ropes. No, they're the same team that they were last season, just slightly worse. All right, actually not slightly worse, just slightly better because they're drawing, not losing. Drawing games like Arsenal, basically. Um, this game, I'm gonna say Manchester United one, Tottenham three because Tottenham has been on a roll. Like Jose Mourinho's team has literally just been kicking ass, and it, like if like they beat Bournemouth three two, like let's just be honest, like they've been on a roll, they've been winning games, and you can just see how a new manager just uplifts the fans and uplifts the players as well, and they just perform at a higher level. You can just see that, and it's just as simple as that, man. So honestly, I'm gonna say. Man United 1, Tottenham 3. Alright, next game. This is at 8.15pm, which is a big-ass game. A Merseyside freaking derby, ladies and gentlemen. Pardon me. Liverpool versus Everton at Anfield. At Anfield, ladies and gentlemen. Two Merseyside teams are going to freaking battle it out to see who have freaking bragging rights, ladies and gentlemen. Two teams that freaking despise each other. All right, Liverpool are going to be up for it. Everton have to be up for that game. They have to be. 
And after conceding and losing against Leicester City, I don't know how they're going to do against Liverpool. At, and at Anfield as well. I think they've been unbeaten at Anfield as well. Freaking tough, tough task for Marco Silva. I don't know, will he even still be in a job? Will he actually be, will he still be the manager at Everton? Who knows? Because he's on, he's on ropes. He's on the ropes, ladies and gentlemen. So, we don't know what's going to happen. And for Liverpool, still beating Brighton. And they had a man sent off. Alisson? I don't know what he was thinking, trying to hand, freaking handball in that outside the box. But do you know what I mean? It's just insane, man. Liverpool with 10 men, still won the game 2-1. That's actually insane. It just, it's Liverpool's it's Liverpool's for the taking. It's honestly Liverpool's for the taking. It's just as simple as that. So for this one, I think Liverpool will win it. I honestly think Liverpool will win it. So for this one, I'm going to say Liverpool 3, Everton 0. No, I don't see Everton actually getting the goal. I don't see them getting a the goal. I don't really see them getting anything at all, if I'm completely honest with you. It's literally just as simple as that. Alright? It's just as simple as that. I don't know if people... Can you actually see my face? You can see a little bit. Fuck, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Honestly, I'm gonna bother. Um, next game. Yeah, this is on the Thursday. Last two games. Sheffield United. Uh, this is on the Thursday, 5th of December. Sheffield United versus uh, the Geordie Boys. So essentially, right. What is it? Yeah. Sheffield United are gonna face Newcastle. They've been on a decent one run. They've been on a decent run getting um, a point against Wolves and they're doing they're doing well in the Premier League so far. I know they're above Arsenal, so do you know what I mean? Like it says everything, doesn't it? And um yeah, Sheffield United is doing well, if I'm honest with you. Newcastle, like I said earlier, uh lucky to actually get a point against Manchester City, but fair play to them. Putting in Jundra Shelby instead of one of the lot long staff brothers, so fair play to that. And yeah, it'll be an interesting game. They're playing at Bramall Lane, and I think there's a Newcastle will rip struggle against Sheffield United at their own ground. They will struggle a lot. So I think there's a Sheffield United will do blitz there. So for this one, I'm going to say Sheffield United 2, Newcastle 0. And now the final game, ladies and gentlemen, the final game Arsenal versus Brighton at the Emirates. A struggling Arsenal who sacked Unai Emery, sacked their manager, brought in Freddie Lombard. Played today against Norwich at Carroll Road. And he came up with a freaking worse lineup than freaking Unai Emery. Playing David Luiz and Mustafi at the back. They're playing David Luiz and Mustafi as a centre back partnership. And he played Xhaka as well. Xhaka, the man that took the captain's arm armband, right? Threw it on the floor and told the fans to F off, alright? That's who we play, ladies and gentlemen. And Arsenal have been struggling. They haven't won, what? I don't think they've had a win. I think that's seven Premier League matches. Altogether, it's eight. But they haven't won They haven't won a game in like seven Premier League matches. I've never seen the team drop so many points in my entire life. I've never seen Arsenal Football Club drop so many points in my entire life. Right, back in the day, right, I'm talking five or ten years ago, that would never flipping happen. In a million years, they would never drop that many points. Never. It's the first time that's happened to them in like 21 years, ladies and gentlemen. That shows you how far their standard and football has dropped from Arsenal Football Club. It's relegation form. It's just as simple as that. It's literally relegation form. And if they keep playing like this, they're just going to go down, 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 down. They're going to be in the, in the freaking bottom half of the Prem. Right? It's just as simple as that. I think this is by far one of Arsenal's worst seasons, if I'm honest with you. Because even under the reign of Arsene Wenger, they weren't drawing every single game. They were winning games at home and losing away. But at least they were winning at home. Right? When, when they're at home, they're not even winning. I swear they've drawn three games at home. And they lost against Frankfurt in the Europa League at home as well, who had no fans. So Arsenal needs to freaking fix up. And with Brighton, they were just really, really unlucky to actually beat Liverpool. But let's go on to Arsenal. They've been playing like absolute ass, right? And in January, they need to sell their freaking centre-backs and buy some new ones, right? Because those centre-backs are shit. It's going to take Freddie Lundberg time to find out what his best formation is and what his best lineup is until Arsenal actually find a new manager that they can freaking hire. Because, let's be honest, right? You can't blame Freddie Lundberg on this, right? He hasn't had enough time or management with the players, all right? He was under Unai Emery, but he didn't actually like make like 
up, like, how can I say enough changes or anything like that. The only person that actually saved Arsenal was Peter Emmerich Aubameyang. Shout out to him actually. He actually, he actually played well. He played very, very well. The penalty. Ah, uh, it's peak. Tim Krul saved it the first time, but obviously Norwich players were in his box. That was just unfortunate. And then he puts it in the same direction like he did before. So it's just, it is what it is. Pure Emmerich Aubameyang. Peter was a beautiful pen. His second penalty was a beautiful pen, and was his second goal was world class as well. Honestly, honest to God, man, like if Arsenal didn't have a Bamian, this the team would be so dead. It would be so dead. And I'm thinking, surely they must beat this team. Surely. So essentially, I'm gonna go Arsenal one, Brighton nil. Surely they should get the win. Surely, at the Emirates they should actually get a win, because if they don't get a win at the Emirates against Brighton, freaking, out, I've lost all the hope. Ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's just as simple as that. If you guys enjoyed this Premier League prediction, week 5, week 15, not week 5, one more about. Make sure to smash a like button, right? Make sure to click the subscribe button as well. Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. More is going to be coming soon um, this, this December. And peace.